So my name is Egi. I'm the uh, chief investment officer of, of Theo. Uh, and uh, so a little bit about me, I'm, you know, I had a mix of both entrepreneurial, trying to find crypto experience. Uh, so I started my career at Bain Capital back when Mitt Romney was still running the place with private equity. Started a, a software company, moved it to California, and uh, you know, ultimately we grew it to 300 people and sold it for a couple hundred million dollars to a public company. Then I worked in hedge funds with tech stocks, uh, ultimately running proprietary trading at Credit Suisse in New York and also in Asia, and then started uh, my own hedge fund with a partner. Then most recently, I was uh, co-head of Polygon Ventures, crypto VC with Polygon. More background about so founding of uh, The founding of Theo. Yeah, so, so, the found, so, so the interesting thing also is uh, part of the reason as a crypto VC, so for a couple of years, I was looking very hard for RWA projects to invest. In order to find, found and build a successful RWA project, you have to have three things. You have to be a deep knowledge of TradFi and how markets work. You have to be really like world-class software engineer. And three, crypto native. TradFi, tech, software, and crypto nativeness. And a lot of founders had two out of three, but not all three. The founders of Thea, they had all three. So they, they, they initially worked in uh, quantitative high-speed market making, which is, these are the smartest people on Wall Street. They actually really know like deeply how markets work. And you know, so they had this vision as like, hey, can we take the same expertise and bring it on chain? And of course, RWAs uh, are, are the biggest opportunity, right? So we have 4 trillion now of cryptocurrency, you know, Bitcoin and, 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 and other things. But the, the really big promise is the 1.5 quadrillion or real world assets that should be all rewired, you know, compared to the old, old legacy infrastructure and, and brought on chain. So the founders had that vision, I had that vision, and, and they basically uh, they, they started building. In order to get RWAs that actually trade, we starting with the ones that already trade in the TradFi world, because then there's a lot of opportunity to make market um, using, using liquidity that already exists in TradFi. That's why we started with money market, Next, we are about to launch gold. It's going to be Theo Gold, tokenized gold. And then it's going to be selected stocks. So the big, this, a subset of the Max 7 stock, something like, I'm not going to like name names, but something like NVIDIA or Palantir. And then a few of the marquee, most liquid, most interesting crypto stocks, like Robinhood, Coinbase, Circle. So this is like the immediate vision because we know that crypto people are going to love to trade them. Once we create the perps, the perpetual futures on those, it's going to be like super crazy exciting. And we can create liquidity right away. And then over time, we can bring liquidity to less liquidity. So I think those were a lot of that with people didn't even try to build liquidity. They weren't allowed, they were afraid of the government. They didn't have the culture, they didn't know the tech, they didn't know where liquidity is, right? They didn't have the agility to quickly find the venues where liquidity resides. And then the second one is focusing, the whole industry focused on kind of the wrong assets in the beginning. But how do you make those kind of the uh, assets made from our teach books? Uh, how is TH bill yeah. made? Yeah, so for that, we'll partner with uh, Wellington and Standard Chartered. So Wellington is the, the man, and, and, and Libera, which is their tokenization uh, kind of a, a project from Standard Chartered. Uh, so Wellington manages, you know, they actually have the, 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 the money, you know, they have the T-bills and they manage a, a mutual fund that's composed of those T-bills. And then, you know, through, through the BR uh, tokenization engine and, and standard chartered, then they have a, a fund that we tokenize. Uh, and then we actually account for the, the vast majority of the AUM of that, of that fund, of the standard charter, like. U.S. Treasury fund on chain. Uh, so that so that's the mechanic. So there's always like this is what I call the legal and compliance is the foundation. We always make sure that whatever our WA will bring on chain, that it is like a blue chip, you know, you know, global multi hundred billion dollar institution behind them, so that there is like no issue, right? So you know, you're not gonna have the nature of crypto assets as they're sometimes fully decentralized, right? Our WAs, there's always gonna be at some point a point of centralization because there is a real asset behind it. But the best we can do is make sure that that the sort of centralization point is the highest quality so that it's easy to trust. And then beyond that, it's all DeFi and it's all self-custody. This, this is another, you know, kind of a related advantage for us is that you own your own assets in your own wallet, right? So a lot of these other projects that exist here in WA before you asked earlier, 
one of the mistakes that people made uh, is you had to create this kind of a Web2 account, right? You had to fill out a bunch of paperwork that were high minimum. It was just not easy to even access those tokenized products. And if you wanted to trade them, you had to trade them with other people that were accredited investors or located in certain areas. So in our case, it's, you know, there's no minimum. And you own it, it's in your wallet, you are your own bank. You don't have, other than the issuer, which is inevitable, but beyond that, if you want to put into DeFi, you do whatever you want with it. You can loop it, you can, you know, send it to your, to, you know, to your friend, you can use it as a replacement for USDC or USDT. So it's a, it's a permissionless composable asset. And, and all of our tokenized assets will be the same way. Since a lot of players are you know, putting their money into digital, could you say for the Korean market? Do you, do you have anything to say? To Specifically for the Korean market? Yeah, no, so we, we, yeah, no, we, we're like huge fans. And I mentioned it, uh, uh, I think, last time we were talking is that, so for me personally, it's a very sentimental market to me because when I was like just starting out, I started a company at school. It's a software company that I mentioned earlier, Location Labs. And I was, you know, one of our investors was from Korea and I was coming here uh, several times, just quite a, quite a long time ago. And uh, my first customer was from Korea. It was actually SK Telecom uh, because we were building, it, it was similar. At the time, we we're building infrastructure software for wireless carriers. Now, he is building essentially infrastructure software for exchanges, <laughs> primarily for like prop exchanges, but more specific infrastructure for proper exchanges to be able to list and RWAs and make them liquid. So it's a similar idea. And I always found that, that the Korean market was very tech forward, early adopters, very willing to try new technologies. And it ultimately worked out. Like after SK Telecom, I got all four U.S. carriers and, and, and Bell Canada in Canada, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile at the time. So I find oftentimes Korean market moves first uh, and uh, in general, like we have several people here on the ground, and as you know, uh, in Korea, including like product team and, and, and design. So we're just like massive. Uh, one of the founders, of course, is uh, is Korean as well. So we're just huge believers in, in Korean market. I love coming here and uh, definitely use the product, give us feedback. We want to make sure it works for uh, for our Korean users. We, uh, as I say, uh, I say, 감사합니다, 친구들.